everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. We are gonna have so much fun today with stencils. So I have noticed a lot of new card makers have been commenting on my videos. And so I thought that I would take us back to one of the most versatile products that we could have in our stash, and that is stencils. So here I'm showing you some double layered stencils. So this is two to a pack. You have the foundational image, and then you have an overlay, which will give you a pattern. And then while we're on the topic, I thought I'd share how I store my stencils. If this is new to you, this is something that I will never go away from because it keeps them all in one place, keeps them from getting all bent up, and I know where they all are. Okay, I'm pulling out some of my stencils and my supplies I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna show you throughout this video multiple ways that you can use your stencils. Some may be new to you, some maybe not, but I'm just trying to show you a few different ways to think outside the box. This first way is gonna to be to use your stencils not just to fill in with ink necessarily, but also as we used to when we were kids. Remember we would get those stencils and they would be just different shapes and different images um, and we would take a pencil and just trace them out. Well, this is what I'm doing here for this first one. So I have some cardstock and I have my umbrella stencil and I just used a really fine point marker to outline. So I could leave it there, but I'm gonna take out the patterns that coordinates with the stencil, it's the second part, and it's like a layering stencil. I'm gonna use my little blending brushes here. Now those are not foam, those are actual bristle brushes, and they're the perfect size to get right into each of those umbrellas. And I'm just using some Catherine Puller inks in rainbow colors, and I'm gonna go through, do all my reds, all my orange, all my yellow, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna come out with this adorable image. <laughs> I, I wasn't even really sure what I was gonna see, or you know, I didn't know what I was to expect. When I pulled that off, I was like, oh, stop it. This is just too cute. So I'm gonna go back to that stencil though, because you know, I don't waste ink. I'm gonna put down some watercolor cardstock, onto this stencil and I'm just gonna spray that with water and now I have a background that I can use. Let's use this same stencil set a little bit differently so I can show you the different looks. Now right here, I'm gonna show you, this is Make It By Marco. It holds 20 blending brushes. That is the largest I've seen and I love it. So I will link that below. Check out Make It By Marco. They have some really cool organizational products over on their site. I am using Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide because I really just want a faint foundation of this color. I don't want anything too dark because I'm gonna go back over it with the same dye inks that I used for the first card. And so you can see the color difference. They're a lot more subdued, more of a softer tone on top. You'll see those finished cards in just a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next stencil. This stencil, all I'm doing here, this isn't anything earth shattering. I'm just tilting it to the side, that's it. And I'm gonna get a whole new look for the intention of this stencil. And then I'm gonna go back in with the um, patterns. This is called the, the patterned hearts. And I'm going to lay that over. Now, I'm doing this pattern part two step. First step is using a darker color pink to get that look onto uh, my background, which I think is just adorable. And then I'm also going to put it back on top and I'm gonna pull out some Nouveau Glimmer Paste in the Moonstone, which is like a clear glitter. Now it's not gonna cover up the darker pink, it's just going to add a sparkle to where that pattern is. So I, uh, you could also use just the solid heart and get a solid cover of the Glimmer, uh, glimmer Paste. It's up to you. But I chose to do it this way and then here you'll see uh, when I pull that back that I have such a pretty just addition of the glimmer paste uh, on top of that pattern. Okay, let's move into our next one. This is the Love Stencil. And this right here is going to be the most seamless blending for your cards. Because you're using a stencil, the stencil's gonna break up the blend between the colors so you're not gonna get any harsh lines. So I'm using these three colors. I even go back in and wipe away a little bit of that so I can go back with my purple and that purple and blue where that meets and where the pink and purple meet, this is gonna be a really, really cool effect. And so there is my background for that. Now I do cut that down later, uh, you'll see. But do not 
get rid of this. Take out your spritz bottle, spray it down, and then place a piece of watercolor cardstock on top and you'll get an opposite effect, which I really, really thought was so cool. It looks very abstract, almost like a mixed media type of look. And yeah, the love word was backwards, but I didn't care. I just thought it looked so cool. I'm gonna show you that again, that uh, technique again, and it, where it comes out a little bit differently, a little bit better. Now I'm pulling out my mini hearts and with this stencil, remember you don't have to cover your whole panel. So right here, I'm just getting a faded up look with these mini this mini hearts rather. And you can do that too if you want more of a clean and simple kind of look with your stencil. So you don't have to go all in. Okay, I am pulling out next here. This is called Butterfly Trails. This stencil actually comes in a six by six and a 12 by 12. So this would be really cool for scrapbooking layouts or other products, excuse me, projects. Maybe you could do something on furniture or a home decor project, really cool. And I am gonna do something a little bit unconventional. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone do this before, but um, Stick with me and I'll tell you the good and the bad of it. So I'm using this smart glue by scrapbook.com and what's interesting about this glue is it dries tacky. So I'm placing it on my stencil and I'm gonna use that almost as my, uh, my nouveau paste, quote unquote, so my uh, embossing paste. And I'm just gonna put little thin layers on at a time because I don't want it to be too globby. And notice I didn't put it right on the image. Now I thought this image came out really well but something that I learned in the process is do it faster than I did it because the glue is gonna to start to dry and it's gonna peel up that black cardstock and make it stick to your stencil. So just move a little quicker. The next thing I'm gonna show you to do with your stencils is to use some sprays. So I'm using Distress Spray Stains here and I'm using three different colors and I'm gonna to try to get this really cool looking blend between them and I thought this came out really cool, but this is another one. Do not wipe that up. Spray it down, press down another piece of watercolor cardstock, and this one I thought came out even more bold than the first time that I did it with the ink. And now you can see, because it's not words, it doesn't matter if it is backwards, right? So now you have this really great look on the opposite side and a lot more color saturation. So that is another way to use your stencils. So here are some of the backgrounds that I was able to make and I think I made all these backgrounds in less than 30 minutes. It was so fast. Another reason why stencils are just brilliant because you can get so many different looks with so many different techniques. So they're just great. Okay, so there is just a snapshot of some of the backgrounds that I was able to make. And the next thing we're gonna do is I'm sort of gonna walk you through how I decided to finish up some of these cards. Some will just be photos at the end. I'm pulling out these three different sentiment sets here. Um, one, the, one is called Feel Better Sentiments 1, Feel Better Sentiments 2, and then XOXO. The reason why I really love these sentiments is because they're not just get well soon. They're words of encouragement. They're um, just reminders for folks who might need it that you know, it might be a hard time right now, but you're never alone and you're strong and just all those really good things. I am going to stamp directly on my card panels with these first two sentiments in different placement on the cards. And I realized that the here for you one kind of got lost on the background of that those umbrellas. So what I'm gonna do is show you in a minute how I'm going to make multiple sentiments at once. All right, so there's my two finished card panels there. I am uh, then going to show you that I took the time to wet down my little stamp cleaner, but then I didn't take the time to reach for a towel and instead pulled out this blue rag, which is the shirt I'm wearing. Anyone else? Anyone else do that? Just me? <laughs> um, okay, I probably should be wearing an apron when I'm crafting. It would make things a lot easier. So this is a tip that I highly recommend for anyone, and that is to take your uh, sentiments that you're using and just pick a sentiment grouping or whatever and just stamp them all at once and heat emboss them all at once. It's going to save you tons of time. Especially because I'm I sat here at my craft desk and I made like 10 cards and it was just so much easier to do this. And I just picked a theme for the day. The theme for the cards for that day was encouragement. And here I am, you can see me, I stamp it twice in the uh, embossing ink, which is the sticky ink. Then I'm gonna pour some white fine powder over it. 
and then I'm going to heat set it with my heat gun. Now make sure your heat gun is warming up while you're doing all this. You want it nice and hot. And I'm using my um, little mini vacuum to clean up the mess I was making uh, right here. I have my embossing powder stored in some of those photo kind of uh, organiz organizers and I flipped it upside down, which was a mistake. This microfiber cloth I'm using is from the auto section of the Dollar Tree. Highly recommend, I use it for lots of things. And I am bubble cutting my sentiment. That's just a Maryism for cutting around the words in the shape of the words. I think it gives it an entirely new look. Now I wanted to remind you also, here's another tip. You know how we use the white gel pen to get, uh, just kind of hide some of those marks from markers or whatever? You can use a black marker to hide any mistakes on your black cardstock as well. And so I had to scrape away some of the dried embossing powder that left sort of a chalky look. I just went back in with a black marker, boom, bada bing, it was done. Here I'm gonna pop up that sentiment on some foam tape. And then I pulled out my scoring tool and my daughter was here and she just had to do it. She just wanted to score. <laughs> I said, all right, maybe I'm overlooking the fun that is scoring a panel. <laughs> I don't know. So there you go. All right, now I'm gonna move into my uh, backgrounds because I wanted a pop of color. I'm pulling out my A2 size Brights paper pad. I'm using my liquid adhesive, which Barely Art Glue is my go-to, and I'm just placing that down then on top of my, uh, that was on top of my card base, and now I'm just putting my card together. I am gonna do one last super fun thing for both of these cards because uh, you know me, I'm a huge fan of embellishing the cards. I think it just takes it up a notch. Right here I'm using some pops of color in the clear gloss, and I'm putting it on as if it was raining pretty hard. So sort of that diagonal rain. You just do just draw it on there. Really, really simple. And that will do it for this card. I did the same, but a different kind of technique on the other card where I made larger drops. And uh, yeah, that's it for those two cards. This was a lot of fun. Um, I have to tell you, I was during this whole crafting session, I made a huge huge mistake on one of my cards. I'm so bad that I'm gonna do a whole nother video so that you can actually hear the real life audio because it's hilarious. But that's because I was half crafting, half helping my daughter. Um, and that's a recipe for disaster. Now I am pulling out this new to me tool where you can cut foil on this little thing here. And I gotta tell you, loving it. I know it's another tool, but if you cut foil a lot and you're using scissors, you are going to love this tool. It just zip, just makes it nice, a clean cut. I know with scissors, oh, nightmare. Now what am I doing? I'm pulling that black cardstock back out with that tacky glue, the smart glue from scrapbook.com, and I am gonna be foiling on it. So let's see what kind of results we get here. Also, if you already have Tombow Mono is a green bottle of glue, that also dries tacky, uh, among some others as well. But look at this result. This is just from glue through a stencil. I was blown away. I thought that was so pretty and this would look really good with a white background as well. So we were very, very pleased. I'm glad she was there for that because she's a rainbow fan. So it all turned out nice. I loved it. I thought this one came out really nice. Okay, so because little extra dots and additions are great, I'm just gonna take a white gel pen and just put little white dots everywhere uh, in clusters of three, it just adds something really cute, really extra to the card. And honestly, I think it makes the colors pop even more. Then I'm going to bubble cut another sentiment here and just keep it simple. I love the white embossing on the black cardstock look. Again, I think that it makes the sentiment stand out really well and just kind of pulls the card all the way together. And I'm gonna pop that up on some foam tape and there we go, that is the finished card for this one. I'm gonna show you some close-ups here in just a second. Really, really impressed with the fact that that was just glue. Now there are other things you can use, like the deco foil transfer uh, paste, you can use that. I believe you let that dry and then put it through a laminator and that works, but this was really simple, no heat needed. Okay, then this next card here, I wanted to keep it in because in case you were wanting to make a shaker card and may have been a little intimidated by it, I really wanted to show you that it is very simple. From the panel I made with the love stencil, I cut a heart out of it and I'm using this stamp 
to uh, stamp that sentiment there. And then I'm going to put some double-sided adhesive on the back of the heart panel, laying down some acetate right behind it because that's gonna be our window for the shaker card. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is start putting foam tape. Now I'm just using one layer of scrapbook.com foam tape. You can use two if you want more movement or it's because I know I'm gonna be using very small, flat kind of shaker bits. I don't really need um, a lot of bulk. I'm then going to take out all the little bits that I want to put and I know that they're going to fall within the circle of the stamp here, which was another really good reason to have placement of that stamp. So I kind of know, then I'm just going to place it right over it and now I have my panel and I can put this on any card base. So that's it. It was that simple. I know it went quick, but it really is very easy. So give it a try if you haven't already. Okay, so that's my shaker card there. But I am just going to do one more thing to it, and I thought it could use a little ribbon. Now, I haven't used ribbon very often on my projects lately. It's just not an embellishment that I uh, pull out anymore, but I thought it was just needing it. I don't know, right there in the center. Could go without it, could go with it, but I'm using a glue dot, just putting one band and then the little bow, and then I trim down the bow to just give it that really cute addition. So that's gonna finish off that card. Now I'm gonna show you some close-ups of this card, but I am also going to show you some of the other ways I finished some more panels that you saw me make in the beginning of this video, and I'll just keep it to pictures only. I just wanted to take a minute and uh, wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. If you celebrate, happy Galentine's Day to all the gals out there, all my friends. And I hope that you are most importantly celebrating the love for yourself. I think that is something I have rediscovered over the course of the last year. I truly can say I have fallen in love with myself and I think I'm a keeper. <laughs> You should feel that way about you too, because it all starts from within. So thank you for joining me. I will list everything I used in the comment section down below in the video. If you want to check any of that stuff out, it'll be there. Also, where we can link up on other social media platforms. I'd love to have you join me over on Instagram where it's not just crafting, it's all the things. And I would love to see you in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.